part of me wants to use the restroom and part of me wants to do the talk. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? These are called the energetic patterns happening at different places. So I think I'll talk and endure through my restroom urges. So if you find me kind of at times uneasy, you would know why. I'm sorry, Sasha is saying, why did we even put this guy up here on the stage, right? Sasha, this is what happens. You, we have to pre-screen our speakers so that they don't create unusual circumstances on the stage, like myself. <laughs> At any rate, so here, <laughs> we take five minutes. But thank you, maybe I'll, I'll leave. <laughs> All right, so here's the scoop. The scoop is, uh, I, this is not really my favorite subject to talk about. Uh, I wanted to talk about something different and something fluffy, and Zaida told me, you are a psychiatrist, remember. You should remain a psychiatrist, and psychiatrists do what psychiatrists should do. And I said, what does that mean? She goes, talk about the subject matter which are medical and which makes sense. So I'll be talking about subject matter which are medical and makes sense at times, and other times they don't. Uh, so I'll stay within the norm of what I know and what I don't. I just want to kind of make a couple comments of the souls who are here today. Uh, we have a dog here too, right? Yeah. So, so dog, was he pre-registered or he registered on site? He registered on site? Okay, so we'll bring in the dog for our first bipolar moment. Uh, this is my first slideshow. So if, you, if you're looking for the PowerPoint slideshows, we start with a dog. People love dogs, love animals. So sometimes they say, you know, well, I want to come back home uh, and be treated like by my dog. I mean, when you come back home and your spouse or somebody else says, you know, where were you all day? The dog doesn't ask that question. You know, he says, welcome home, right? So, you want to kind of uh, you pick it up? See? Yeah, you want to Do see? Do we pick her up? Yeah, bring it up here for a second. Okay. All right. So, this is our slide number one. Uh, uh, our love for animals, creatures, and being. And we're all one anyways to begin with, right? I mean, we just become this and that. A tree or a, or a puddle or a you know, a seed or a human being, right? I mean, but eventually we are no different than a dog, no different than a tomato, no different than a bird. Uh, we all are divine gifts in this world that we live in, right? I mean, the, God created us all, and God is one, but many face ways to find it, right? Okay. So, so I wanna kind of thank Sandy for what she does in our office. So when you're making a comment regarding our being together, it's really not me, we all are together trying to learn and, and, and trust ourselves and, and understand our knowledges and deliver them in the, in the most humble way. So thank you for coming with Kaya and um, I'll get down to actually doing some medical talk here uh, because you paid to come here and you would not want to be leaving without learning. So. We will just do science, you will do the art. Facts of knowledge are not mine, we just discover them. Gravity is there. If we know it, we work with gravity. So there are some laws and diseases of the brain. I did not discover them, somebody else did, I learned them. And so I use those knowledges to make people aware. And then they live those through their art of living, right? So science is what I describe. Then art of living is uniquely individual, and each person does that differently. So story of a tree, uh, and Kylie talked about a tree. Um, a tree is very simple. Uh, it needs a few basic things, right? Water, it doesn't need coke or coke products. It needs just simple carbon dioxide, it just needs some sunshine, and it just really kind of needs some soil and nutrients, right? 
And in one of the conferences, I made that comment, and Krishna afterwards said, oh, the trees which are grown indoors are not subjected to adversities of life. So they do not have endurance. So the tree which is outside is going to be given a lot of adversities, rain, uh, strong winds, hails. It's not only going to get just sunshine, it's going to be subjected to very powerful forces of life. And that's what develops a real tree with the adversities of life. So if we look at that tree example, we as human beings are really no different than a tree, a walking tree. We have some very basic premises and we need some very basic needs. And we are just we have we have this locomotor system which allows us to move around and go places and whatnot, which is very beautiful. But our fundamental needs really boil down to extremely simple things. So if in people's life adversities are arriving, we can either see them as a bad thing or it will develop us, help us develop endurances and capacities. You know? So when people are diagnosed with bipolar disorder or depression or something else, remember these conditions were there before the modern times arrived. So many a times, and I want to clarify my position on these things, there were a lot more diseases and disorders. We did not know how to effectively manage them for much, many, many years. There were hospitals full of people, and, and there were a lot of sufferings. People used to die of tuberculosis and syphilis and, and infectious diseases, and the lifespan was 45, 50, or something like that. Now we are living up to 70 and 75. So when people are bashing the new modern scientific discoveries, I, have an ex I make an exception to that. I think that now we are able to make better diagnoses, better treatments. So medical model does not mean that that is the only model. It can be complemented with other conditions and treatments and opportunities. So it should not be this or that. It can be together. If I have a broken bone and I have an infection, I'm going to go and get it fixed by an orthopedic doctor. I'm not going to sit down and breathe about that. You know, it just needs that. So that's where I am in, in the context of these treatments. And uh, so natural medications, we'd never see them as the natural medicines, but they are. Um, we never see them as natural medicines, but they are. We never see a little salt coming from a mountain which have was four million years ago under the earth, under the ocean, as insignificant, but it really isn't. It has a lot of wonderful qualities which were built in, like about 84 minerals already in a salt. The salt that we are consuming these days, uh, the table salt, is far more powerful, far more ineffective, does not have anything other than sodium chloride. Okay? So, so we, are, we are fooled by the modern food chains. We are fooled by the modern way of what looks like a spinach may not be a good grown spinach. And we have to become very clear about these things because that's creating a lot of diseases and disorders. So a company, I don't have the time for my doctor appointment. Go in my place and tell him you're having trouble sleeping at your desk. And don't let him sweet talk to you about diet and exercise. I want pills. That is how we are trained. We don't have the time, but we want our medicines, and we want to go back to the same runs of life. And that's OK with many doctors. Many doctors, even in our practice, I have people who would just come in and get their medicine. They do not want to hear the next conversation. And that's perfectly fine. It's easier for me to write a prescription than to talk about a disease and a disorder and educate people. And I would say 80% of the people who come to our practice have that mindset. It's not their problem. It's our cultural problem. We consume more medicines in this country than all the world on the one side. It's absolutely stunning the amount of medicines we consume in the USA. And it's no coincidence. You and I are doing that as we speak. So integrative medicine, as it is, is not a medicine of exclusion. It's a medicine of making mindful choices, 
and making choices within the reason of what is what will work and being able to use them. So what does that mean? Uh, I just picked up this, uh, actually this is Dr. Uh, um, uh, Nussbaum's uh, uh, slide and nutrition is very important. So is the physical activity. Uh, you cannot be watching television and watching a game and thinking that you're playing the game. You are not playing the game. You're just watching and popping popcorn and food. And, and just, that does not qualify to be physical activity. Physical activity is when you're sweating, when you're moving, when you are moving, not a hockey player, or your remote. You know, remote can be moving. That's not good enough exercise. And spirituality, very important. Uh, in the present day and time, we don't talk about these subject matters, but I hear about those subject matters. So I'm going to be going to Turkey in two weeks, and I, I hear such an interesting questions when I make that statement. So somebody would say, actually, even our brochure, when the brochure went out, uh, we were trying to conserve our postage because we had very meager resources to get the get thing. So we have a nonprofit. It's Muslim Physician Society of Greater Pittsburgh. So we use that as a nonprofit venue to send it in a cheap way. So Krishna called me up and he goes, "Who is doing this conference? C. Clair or a Muslim Physician Society?" I said, "Oh, we were just using that to make it a cheaper way of getting the word out." And he said, "People are asking that question. Okay, so people ask questions regarding religions." and its impact on their decision-making processes. So there's not a day go by when people, if they know that I follow a particular faith, they will ask me, what is this ISS? What are these guys doing? What, what do you think about that? What's your dress code? So we are having these conversations of fear and challenging ourselves, and yet it's important that we know that there's really truly one faith in this world, and that faith is that we are alive, that we were born, and that we will die. And in between, we have some time to spend in a most meaningful manner that we can, right? Really, that's really one thing. Death is certain. I don't know where I'm going to go, but I don't care for me to have my beliefs become yours, right? I mean, we all have to have different beliefs. But my point here is, you know, there's this whole psychological difficulties going on based on fears and worries about where we are at, what's happening, are we safe or not. And my, my suggestion is, you know, that we begin to look at spiritualities not from the eye of fear, but through the eye of wisdom and through the eye of light, not through the eye of darkness. And so my invitation for all of us is to begin to set that intention. Well, if I know my faith, maybe I need to know somebody else's faith, my neighbor my brothers, my sisters, somebody around here, and get to know their culture and get to know them so that I'm not fearful of anybody, but I'm enlightened by something. So as Kylie was talking about her matters of you know, exploration of the world cultures, I think we all need to explore, and, and America is so very beautiful. Right in here is every culture. Italy is here, you know, China is here, India is here. You know, you look, pick up a country. Uh, yesterday I saw somebody, Ruthan asked me to see, from Korea. Now we have all the cultures right here, right? So we can learn from each other and, and, and grow from each other rather than worry about each other. Mental stimulation, you know, doing something which is important and interesting. Socialization, which is very critical. We are social animals. We like to be social. We like to know each other. Otherwise, we feel very alone. So what does that have to do with bipolar and all that? Everything to do with the bipolar and everything. You know? So let me now go over some of the things. So the treatments of the future are going to be medications used mindfully rather than mindlessly. Integrating nutrition, exercise, yoga, energy-based care, mindful living, storytelling, grandmother's wisdom, music, form, chicken, herb, dance of life. Anything that you like. You know, that's a recipe. So when I'm seeing people, I'm giving them this recipe of life. What do I see every day? This is what I see. And literally, sometimes I have to accommodate people as an emergency. And it, I, I compromise my own sometimes well-being to see people. This is the amount of pathology we are seeing. And I'm not exaggerating that. You know, um, Sometimes my next appointment is in five weeks. 
So Ruth Hen picks up the phone and says, I have somebody suicidal sitting in my office. Can you see them tomorrow? Well, how do I do that? I have to compromise on something that I wanted to do to see this woman, right? And this is what I'm seeing. And this is not a story. This is the real situation. Mood disorders are abundant. Psychotic disorders are abundant. Anxiety disorders, personality disorders, addictive disorders. We do addiction treatments. If we open our doors for treatments, it will be filled up. We only take one insurance. It limits us to the number of people who come in. And even then, ask Sasha, she's my PA, do you take time to have lunch? Not usually. She does not take the time to lunch because of what? Because you don't like lunch? Patience. Patience. Asking for what? Help. Okay, so this is what people are seeking help for. Intellectual impairment disorders, dementia-related disorders. So from these, I just picked up just few. So we have a very complex system of health, and I just wanted to show you so that you know that I know my stuff. <laughs> Mind and gut connections, what, what may be going on in the gut can affect the brain. We call it a second brain, okay? If your gut is giving you a message, pay attention rather than going to a gastroenterologist and start those, those medicines which may just reduce your acidity, but not your heartaches. Drugs impacting, so I just want to give you a little peeks. There are so many ways the brain is working. So when people come in and say, oh, I'm just using a little bit of marijuana, it should be legalized anyways, we talked about that. That's perfectly fine. I also know what it does to the brain by turning the brain into a various difficult situation of psychosis. Okay? So when we know that, we have to then see how are we using it and who is using that. Regardless of that, PCP, alcohol, nicotine, these all opioids, alcohol, they all have a wonderful way of working at a brain where we feel happy. Okay? So we are trying to find some happiness through drug use and drug use does not give us any happiness. I have not seen one yet. So the diseases and disorders, panic attacks, 2.4 million, obsessive compulsive, 3.3 million, schizophrenia, 2.2 million, manic depressive, 2.3 million people, major depression, 9.9 .9 million. So these are very interesting numbers and, and, and staggering numbers. So before the advent of psychiatric medicines, people, used to in hospitals, law, lots of people were in the hospitals, and diseases and disorders were abundant, and we didn't know what to do with them. So over time, we have begun to know, and so the number of people now in, in psychiatric hospitals or other places have really diminished to minuscule numbers. Um, so U.S. healthcare costs continue to rise, you know, from here all the way to here, and still doctors are very busy, everybody's very busy, Doctors are very frustrated. Nurses are very frustrated. You know, so we all are kind of struggling. So why? So our love, love for medicine is humongous. Over the last 10 years, we, it's a national epidemic. Prescription drugs now surpass motor vehicle accidents as number one cause of accidental death in almost half the states in the country. Okay. Accidental deaths, it's absolutely amazing. You know? um, so these are, these are real issues. You know, these are not just my imaginative thing. So what do we do? Uh, so in the field of psychiatry, we use treatments such as antidepressants, mood stabilizers, anti-anxiety medicines, antipsychotic medications, cognitive memory stabilizers. So when people begin to first have problems at a young age, they don't want to have it. You know, who wants to have problems in their life? So by the time we begin to have a problem and we begin to get some treatment, is around here, and then we get serious treatments, you know, happens later. So depression is very common, as I said. You know, what does, de what does depression mean? You, if it's your normal mood, you feel depressed. And this is not a casual state of, oh, I'm feeling sad today. It's a pervasive darkness, shadows of light, just disappearing pain that would not disappear every day. Even taking a shower is a job. You know, getting out of the bed is work. That those are depressions we talk about. And when it lasts for that long, it needs treatment. So we have mood disorder that lingers on, 
then you know their emotional component to that mood disorder there are physical component to that mood disorder you know sleeping too much fatigue decreased energy depression makes people just just very depressed so as we were looking at some of these scans so we can see you know depressed brain scan and you know not depressed brain scan and see the, that you know they have uh, different different ways that the brain is behaving seasonal depression who is loving winters here no no nobody loves winter you know everybody says oh spring you love winter yeah okay so some maybe at least one person uh, so this is a beautiful thing uh, everybody comes and yesterday i was going to the record club for my swimming and somebody said where did the spring go you know because one day we are better and the other day we are back to that coldness so seasons have a very strong biological impact on people's mood and so these are very common condition postpartum depression you know i've seen people who would have depressions following children's births and sometimes the degree that they feel extremely extremely unhappy even raising their children and they make statements i should love my child but i can't you know what's wrong with me and the guilt then sets in so these are serious condition and the public public uh, you know uh, you know uh, difficulty disorder so how do we manage them you know basically speaking we share the knowledge of depressions with people and say you well this is these are the options and here are the options i can i can offer to you uh, and and teaching them the personality of a disorder okay so we tell them this is how these things behave you know this is how they will because we know them over a longer period of time that you know treatment after first episode has to be done you know then second episode to the longer treatment then if you have a third episode of depression you really need to be treated for a longer time because it will continue to recur and really kind of what are the treatments you know we medicines medicines in my opinion are quick relief from depressive symptoms or any psychiatric disorder and that's perfectly fine you know it's perfectly okay to get your bone fixed get your your eye glaucoma taken care of why not to take care of your depression right i mean if you have pneumonia that's perfectly a healthy thing to do psychotherapy we do ecd treatments you know we do combination of thing natural remedies is something in our practice we just started doing in the past year or so so we have you know Jamie and her uh, you know associates here today from uh, you know from uh, you know from natural frontiers and also you know uh, Swan has just arrived with uh, you know uh, sitting with uh, Dr Dan Wagner uh, so these guys have done this for many many years you know they have done natural resources and how to provide that healing uh, Dan will you know he'll be speaking later uh, he has a natural form see all he provides is just natural products you know so is you know we have ted who will be our another speaker who will be talking about his 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 combination of various thing that he's providing so i just want to make a sec take a second really i was introduced to many of the natural local healers through swen he really became the instrument of connecting different dots to different people so i want to thank you for having done that over a period of time so we have that here So what medication choices well there are a number of medicines i do not want to burden you with the amount of medicines but that is the art that i had learned over years you know what medicine to use and what manner when to hold them when to take them away it's almost like construction and building you know you construct a building you start with the foundation and then you kind of make sure you know that the boards are right there you know the safety zones are declared and then you begin to kind of build upon the next floor and the following floor you cannot build an attic before the basement is done so so medically we know how to develop a person from nothing in their psychological matter to be to be able to re- refresh themselves and so antidepressants work you know they, they have a beautiful so there is these sometimes i will see these especially in the integrative uh, you know community of people they will say all oh, all these medicines are no better than placebo no i disagree with that these medicines do have efficacy and benefit and longitudinal studies are done to be able to make those points um they they have particular sciences behind them so exercise for depression um i was in a in a in a lecture one time and somebody said somebody was asking a question about a new medicine which had come in the market and the researcher just stopped and said well let me take a pause folks exercise always wins against every other antidepressant 
Okay. And this was a 30-year uh, researcher in the field of that particular field from University of Pittsburgh. And I was so very glad that he made that comment. So if you're not going to exercise, nobody can do it for you. Uh, but we have to figure out a way to exercise, um, like this one. Uh, this is how the brand changes as you're exercising or using a medicine. Uh, ECT, we use ECT for profound depressions, when depressions cannot be managed by uh, simple technology. We use uh, transmagnetic stimulation, which is a newer uh, technology to use for depression management, uh, for bipolar mood disorder. So why, what is bipolar? Bipolar is not if you are irritable and just a little anxious and you're mean, you know. So many people come in, actually men come in because their wife is threatening them to divorce or get out of the house and say, you are bipolar, go see the doctor, okay? Well, they may be having just marital difficulties and men are very interesting creatures than women are, you know, they're just two different species in different ways. So every argument, and volatility does not qualify to be, become a bipolar disorder. It requires a certain understanding of what we define in the field of medicine and psychiatry, what that really means, and that requires certain knowledge and understanding. So what is it, you know, and I'll just kind of use this as a, as a, as a quicker, so we use certain diagnostic criteria. And if you use them over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, you begin to see things more clearly, like any other business of life, right? You know, if you're a plumber, you see a problem over and over and over again. Uh, my teacher, I used to be when I was a resident, uh, she would, after I would start presenting three or four sentences, my case to her, she would say, oh, I bet he is bipolar. I said, Dr. Kane is really superb hero. Because she would just pick up things from very quickly, because she had done it for so long, for so often, and truly, when you do it for so long and so often, within short time, you begin to know where that's going, you know, where the story is going to go. And the rest of the story validates your initial uh, ability to kind of discern that. But we use certain criteria, uh, you know, and I'll just use this as a template. Uh, uh, elevated expenser, irritable mood lasting for one week, inflated self-esteem and grandiosity, decreased need for sleep, more talkative than usual, pressure to keep talking, fight, flight of ideas or subjective experience that thoughts are racing. So this is just one little thing. So now it's a picture, you know, if somebody's very happy all the time and they can be happier and continue to be happier, well, maybe there's something that needs to be looked at. Distract, they're very easily distractible, you know, excessive involvement in pleasureful activities, you know, impulsivity. Um, so for the sake of moving through the ideas, now we are beginning to recognize perhaps inflammation in the body can cause not only arthritis, but a brain difficulty as well. We used to think that inflammation is going to cause you know, diseases and disorder the rest of the body. The new understanding is, oh, maybe the brain diseases and disorders are from inflammation just the way a tree which is unhealthy tree, maybe there's a problem in the nutrition of the tree or the location of the tree, right? So this is a relatively newer understanding in the field of psychiatry, which goes back to when people are saying, you know, well, we change gluten, we change this thing in people's uh, dairy and whatnot, and they begin to get better. Oh, their mood got better, their diabetes got better. It means there's something that was systematically done to improve their whole body structures, right? Does that make sense? You know, my ears are also attached to my body, by the way. It's not only ENT doctor who knows what to do with that. Maybe what I'm eating and listening and doing is pain, you know, having an impact on our body and on my ear. So this newer understanding is actually very exciting because we are now recognizing the role of inflammation and what we can do, and that's where these natural supplements and these kind of things are very, very important to know what we are deficient, deficit in. And, and what we really need to do to make our bodies more healthy. In, in conditions like that, we use various medicines. They are powerful medicines. Uh, we have you know, folks who make Latuda. Uh, they're, they're gathering over there too. Absolutely beautiful medicine at a certain stage of our life and sometimes even at the maintenance stage of life. 
but latura alone cannot take away the bipolar disorder you know you need to do a lot more to be able to make sure you know that you're living in a healthful space and, and thus the necessity of you know normalizing human behavior stress and anxiety who doesn't have stress and anxiety you know? i mean we all have stress and anxiety and that is absolutely the most wonderful thing to endure in this life right because stress and i mean you cannot be happy all the time it would be so very boring to be happy you would even forget to know what happiness means because you'd be lost in happiness you would not have a, any contrasting way to even know what happiness really means right sadness allows us to know what happiness is pain allows us to know what not to be in pain is right these are very fundamental this world is set up on a dichotomous manner so without those contrasts the brain cannot get it you know so we have a sunshiny day it makes us appreciate when we were kind of in cold clammy days right so it's very very important to know adversities are so very wonderful and great training for us four or five years ago i was going through some very difficult time and i have a friend in pakistan and uh, i called him up and i said i'm getting screwed basically speaking i said i don't even know what's going to happen to my life my degrees are flying everywhere you know i don't know if i'll be able to function and work and he made some comment and he said you know what safter god trains us not only through love but also through adversities he said it's it's a part of, it's a part of the wheels of a training cycle you know one is love you know we call it you know jamal and one is jalal you know jalal is you know when the god is getting your attention and saying get yourself together where are you going so adversities are absolutely powerful but they're also part of the training and that's why when people are going through even the marine folks they are going through training and all that they go through a lot of adversities right i mean they're being trained to go through the training so our life is that uh, so so when you are exhausted you may want to see what is exhausting you right I mean, there are only 24 hours in this day of life. Unless you go to Mars and some other planet, you know, you got to live within the 24 hours in a day, right? If you're making an agenda for the day which is not going to be accomplished in 24 hours, then think again. You know, maybe it's not worth doing that agenda. What has to go, right? So anxieties are produced many times not only as a disorder, but as an overwhelming state of brain, which is working 16 to 18 hours. and then you wonder why can't i go to sleep at night you know well because your brain is still running you know it cannot just automatically be turned off at night time when you think it should sleep and then you get up and watch some more tv and and look at an email that you don't like then you are going to be awake rest of the night isn't that beautiful so trying to find some wisdom within even good things can be stress you know sometimes we think i'm going to get married and life will be fantastic think again you know because you may have time to reflect on the marriage when you have children think again god knows they make so much of a drama in your life you know and it's wonderful because without children and marriages you would not have a fully rich life you know because they create such a such a noise every day me and my you know zaida you know we both were physicians our first son was born she trusted me to keep him sleeping and going through the night time you know so i fed him changed the diaper did everything that i should be doing then he was crying again and again and again and again i thought maybe i'll just observe him crying now she comes over what are you doing i said what do you mean i changed his diaper i cha- gave him food i gave i got his burp out what else do you want me to do you know she so she put him up and start rocking and he stopped crying you know so perhaps he needed more than a father figure just feeding him and you know changing his diaper so sometimes we need to learn the the beauty of connection and what not and but even having children is a stress even normal children just consider if they become difficult children god knows you will learn a lot so our uh, this is a slide i was dreading because i cannot tolerate these um Uh, my stress this is creating me stress actually um there we go so we do a lot of mindfulness meditation folks you know so people ask me stress reduction mindfulness i can give you xanax i can give you lorazepam i can zonk you out you be sleeping like an elephant for the next 20 hours but meditate please learn how to meditate and and it it works much better 
much more superior, less side effects. I have not had anybody claiming and blaming meditation to having a rash okay, or driving impaired. You know? It just does not cause that kind of difficulty, but benzodiazepines can, right? I mean, so, so we also do a lot of dialectic behavioral therapy, and that is one of the cornerstone of our practice. So our integrative practice really is not the practice of just you know, uh, you know, doing this or that. We, we, we feel that if people learn their diseases and disorders, then they're able to be re-empowered to manage their conditions more effectively. We, we help them discern between the options which are there. I have a woman, I have seen her, actually Ruthann and I have seen her together for 18, 19 years. Uh, she saw a psychiatrist who basically told her, you're a hopeless case, there's nothing I can do about you. So Ruthann does favors to me, she sends me hopeless situations and then she expects me to do something creative. But basically speaking, nobody's hopeless. You know, we all may have very difficult situations, but many a times I don't have answers for people's difficulties, but I still can listen to them. I can relate to them. I can provide them support, right? Okay, I mean, if I don't know what to do, at least I can be nice to them as a minimum, right? Okay, and so that is a good medicine that woman, her interest is only in medicines. As her disease and disorders have progressed, I'm giving her more and more medicines. Now she's taking maybe four pages medicine, you know, at least as a minimum. So yesterday I sat down with her and I said, would you, and she said, I cannot sleep well at night. And I said, would you consider doing some yoga? She looked at my face again, haven't you gotten my my verdict on that, she does not want to do anything to do with meditation. End of conversation. So what do I do? I print prescriptions, I sign them, and I wish her well. She said she could not afford to get the Abilify anymore because her plan had changed, and she said, it's costing me $1,000. I can't do anything about that. If the plan, insurance plan has changed, and your no medicine is not covered, what can I do? I really cannot do other than pray for you a bit more, right? Yeah. So, but she's not interested in anything else other than getting the medications. So we give her medicine. You know, it's really that simple. And, but those who are open to other learning, we offer them the opportunities of coming in and you know, get, meeting our nutritionists, meeting our yoga teachers, you know, coming in and just you know, doing some drumming with us and learning from the various aspects of life. So, and I'm not saying but one, one body is right or wrong. They all are beautiful human beings. It's almost like if somebody wants to sell me a car and I'm not interested in buying that car, I'm not going to buy that car. It doesn't, have, it doesn't mean the car is not good. You know? it is, it's maybe the best car in the world. You know? I love my Honda CRV, which I got like eight years ago. It still serves me very well. I don't care for any car. It doesn't have a value for me, right? So some people do not value certain options. And I respect that. I mean, I'm not saying that from the angle of. So tomorrow is mandatory meeting on employee health and well-being. The meeting starts at 6 a.m. So it will interfere with your sleep and not your work. Doesn't that send a message that work is more important than health? I hope so. That is the theme of the meeting. No? Healthy employees are unproductive. They're always exercising or eating fruit when they should be working. We prefer employees who work hard and die before they, their pension starts paying out. Suddenly I feel sick right on schedule. This is the infrastructure of our health working environment, you know. I mean, you could be always late. So I'm going to f close in the next one or two minutes here. Um, dance with life, folks. Life is short. Or you can feel miserable with life. Those are the only two choices I know. You know feeling miserable or dancing and moving with life. These are our PA students. We, we send them to a farm. Uh, and they learn to actually be with the earth and, and know how to grow organically. No, so these are some of my students, and the students who are here now will be learning how to do that. So natural medications for things, and I'm just going to round it up. 
when we do research and our awareness, I just don't go around and say, oh, I went to that little thingy and I think this is good for you. I have spent close to three to four years to figure it out what actually has strong scientific methodology to address people's psychiatric needs. Okay, and so I just picked up on this one thing, rhodiola rosea. It's an adaptogen, increases resistance to chemicals, biological and physical stressors, enhances, stimulates nervous system, enhances physical and mental uh, performance, prevents altitude sickness, alleviates fatigue, depression, psychological stress, importance, burnout, and this comes directly from David Mitchellon, you know, who is the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the director of Alternative to Medicine uh, Center uh, at, at Boston. You know, so I just picked up just one thing from his Mass General Hospital, you know, from, from his lecture. So with that said, I'll just kind of say rhodiola is very pleasant. Your medicine may smell badly. Uh, essential oils are beautiful. And practically, life is beautiful even with its adversities. So I'm going to go for my break, whether you say it or not. Thank you all for your patience.